So, we can now really start to explore the tech tree. This is where, once you get to this stack, this is when you really have to start making decisions because it's going to cost you 45 science to unlock any of these parts. And there's a lot of different ways you can go. You could get bigger fuel tanks and engines that are much more suited for flying in space. This engine is kind of useless at the ground level, but once you're in space, it's very, very efficient. You can have structural parts which make your rocket stronger. You can build aircraft parts. This is a nice one because it adds a whole bunch of aircraft bits and pieces here. Uh, flight control is sort of useful because it adds uh, wings that let you steer and add you an, an inline cockpit for passengers and uh, reaction wheels. And right down the bottom, you have space probes with power, with batteries. Batteries are very useful for space probes and the too hot thermometer, which is a, another useful science experiment. So I think I'm going to go with the science experiment because having more science lets you unlock more science, right? I mean, it's, it's good, isn't it? Let's keep that. Okay, close. Now that we've reached space, we have a whole plethora of, of uh, contracts. We have a bunch of different things that we can do. We can perform visual surveys of Kerbin, which means flying to a certain location on the map and doing a crew report. We can take space tourists on suborbital hops. So this space tourist wants to go up to 75,000 kilometer or meters or whatever. That's fine. We could take two tourists to this altitude. That would be cool as well. Or we can perform visual surveys of... Cur We've done that. We can test parts. So this is a part which we don't have. But we can test it by uh, taking this contract. The only problem is to test this, we need... I think to test this, we would need a an air intake. Actually, that's not true. This one's easy. It just says, to perform the test, activate the part when all test conditions are met. And the test conditions are landed at Kerbin, which means you just go onto the launch pad and activate it. And that will be the test, even if it just splutters out immediately because it has no air coming into it. So that is actually a really good contract. You know, it tests something landed at Kerbin. Those are great experiment, uh, great contracts to have. Look, we get two of them. Uh, we're going to accept both of those. And this is like free science. Look, we just close this off. We're just going to build a super simple mission just to test these items. We don't need a full rocket, right? We can throw this away. We just need a capsule so we have someone controlling it. So let's zoom in here. And uh, you can use page up and down to scroll down, up and down. Let's put this capsule in. Throw away the heat shield. We don't need to do that. Now, what were the parts we had to test? We had to test the LV-909. So that's going to be interesting. <laughs> we can, I guess what we can do is have a very simple fuel tank in the middle and I can take another fuel tank and we can pair them off the sides here. There are two fuel tanks. So we'll put the wheezy N-Jet engine in the middle. We can put these sticking on the top there. Look at that. That, that jet engine isn't going to do anything, I don't think. Uh, and finally, we can get all our science instruments that we're missing. So we have a science junior that we're missing. Let's put those on there. And two hot thermometers. Oh, two hot thermometer. I thought I picked this up. Two hot therm... Ah, oh, there it is. Stick it on the side. Brilliant. Let's just stick it right on the side here. We can stick two on. There, that's a perfectly good mission there. Uh, let's try launching this. So this should be able to do both of those contracts by testing them. And when you're doing a test contract, right, you click on the contracts page and it'll tell you the test conditions and it says, Kerbin and landed. And again, Kerbin and landed. So let's uh, just see what happens when I test this. Right, we're gonna do both of these and space. Bingo, both of these are completed. And I've just turned off the engine immediately because I there's no point wasting fuel, fuel costs money. While I'm here, let's observe the materials bay for more science. So we're going to keep that and let's do the thermometer log temperature. 
keep that data too. Okay, and I guess it didn't actually put it on there. There might be an extra thermometer hidden in the middle there or something, depending upon how the symmetry went. Uh, we already have a crew report from here, but one thing we don't have, incidentally, is we don't have an EVA report from the ground. So I can just drop onto the ground here, and we can literally get science by uh, doing an EVA report on the ground. And you'll say, oh, I don't think a spacesuit was entirely necessary. But that's good. We don't care if it's unnecessary. It's science. Recover this. And we'll add that science to our total. Great. And uh, we can then click on this spacecraft and recover that. And that brings up to 40 science. See how close we are? Well... You know what? We can actually get science from another location. This whole runway, that is a separate biome. So we can just do the same thing, right? We're, we're like so close to getting the next chunk, the next uh, node. We can just build a science harvesting chunk, uh, you know, thing here, right? Let's just stick one of these on. Oh. We can stick on a thermometer. We can stick on a bit of mystery goo. And then we can run another mission here. And we're not even going to launch. We're just going to sit this down on the runway and turn on all the science that we can use. See this? Oh, look at it. It's uh, kind of nose down there because the capsule is so heavy. So observe Mystery Goo. We do a crew report. We do the observe materials bay. We do a thermometer. And uh, yeah, we can also EVA again. And flying is technically will be over the shore. So if I do this, it says, oh, we're flying over Kerbin Shores. Great, we can use that. Store the experiment. And standing up will be a different location again. EVA report. EVA report from the runway. Keep that data. So we've probably picked up at least five sites there. And I'm going to try running back in here. So I, you know, WASD, if you hold shift, you'll run. And then space, he'll jump, and he'll ragdoll because he jumped into it. I'm just trying to do this to recover the item as quickly as possible. That I, that object there is my first flag. Okay, let's try this again. And jump! Yes! No! Come on, get on! Oh, darn. He's trying to climb on board. Oh, there, there we go. It's <laughs> a lot of fun with the Kerbals trying to crawl around there. So we've boarded, and we're going to recover this vessel. And there we get 62 science! And we, we we actually got some funds from recovered parts, but that doesn't matter so much. So we can go in and unlock one more node. So why not unlock the aviation node? We did test this engine. So let's test this engine. We're going to go out, and we're going to actually perform a mission for money. So if you remember these visual surveys uh, mm -hmm. missions... This is a crew report near area D81JZ. Uh, what we have to do is fly out there. We'll get 7,500 funds beforehand. And uh, if we complete it, we'll get 13,000 funds. These are atmospheric targets, and they're best done by... Uh, they're, they're best done by uh, aircraft. Oh, there's another... Uh, there's another contract here for testing while landing. That's great. We'll do that, and we'll perform a visual survey. We'll keep those around. We still have the orbit Kerbin one, but I'm not going to orbit Kerbin until uh, I've unlocked a few more parts, just because I think it's a little more wise to do that. We're going to upgrade a few bits and pieces. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, find out where this place is. I should have probably found out where the place is before I accepted the contract, but it's all the way over here. I'm here, and this is all the way over here. If you want, if you're really good, you can actually launch like a suborbital rocket all the way over here. But instead, I'm going to build an aircraft. So yeah, if you want to build an aircraft, the place to be is the space plane hangar. Even though you're not building a space plane, you're building a plane which flies through space filled with air, also known as the atmosphere. Okay, so let's just ditch this whole thing. Instead, for building the aircraft, we're going to use the Mark I cockpit. This is a fine example of high technology. It's basically the equivalent of the command pod, but it has an aerodynamic nose and a little more torque and some other stuff. Now, since we're going to be flying around, let's, uh, let's put some scientific gear on this, right? We've got the Science Junior we can stick there. 
Uh, we can slap a couple of these uh, thermometers on, but actually, now I think about it, and we're, I am trying to think about this as we go along, let's put the fuel tanks on there. Now, to copy these, I'm holding the Alt key and clicking on the item, and it creates another copy there, so I don't need to keep going back there. These fuel tanks are going to be carrying the, the fuel for the jet engine. So the jet engine is the J33 Weasley. Attach it to the back there. Now the jet engine here only is unlike the liquid fueled engine in that it consumes intake air and liquid fuel instead of oxidizer and liquid fuel. So these tanks provide liquid fuel and oxidizer. What you do is you right click on each tank and you just use the left mouse button to slide down and decrease the liquid, the oxidizer to zero because you have no need to carry that with you and carrying excess weight in a plane is just a recipe for all sorts of problems. Okay, so those thermometers I was wanting to bring with me, let's stick them on here. Let's, we're going to double up. Uh, now with the space plane hanger, the type of symmetry you have is completely different. You only have two-way symmetry and it is aircraft style symmetry. So I can show you the difference between this when we stick on some wings. Let's put on some of these tail wings first. These are the Delta Deluxe winglet and I'm going to put it at the back here. Now notice that the symmetry here is, is mirror symmetry rather than radial symmetry, right? So if I move this up, then the other side goes up. Now you can actually switch symmetry modes by pressing R. So if I pick this up and then press R, now it says symmetry radial. And if I turn it around, it rotates like that. So this allows you to create things like, uh, uh, you know, raised wings and stuff like that that you'll see on aircraft. It, I have a very long video series, three episodes long, talking about aircraft design. And it's well worth looking because the laws of physics and aerodynamics have not changed enough that you're going to be uh, surprised by it. So I've uh, added three things at the back. These will provide stability. And then we're going to add some wings towards the front. These are going to be the swept wings. Now, this is a rough approximation of my aircraft. I'm gonna, Before I go anywhere, I'm going to check the center of mass and the center of lift. Important thing with aircraft is your center of lift should not be in front of your center of mass. Otherwise, you will flip out of control. So since it's that far back, I can afford to move it forwards a little. And this actually looks a lot more like a realistic aircraft. Okay, so what else do we need? Well, we're going to need some control surfaces. Control surfaces help you steer. These uh, winglets at the back come with control surfaces built in. But for the main wings, you have to attach them. Now, they go on the back here. And the problem is... They don't want to attach in the correct orientation, so you have to rotate it. There's two ways to rotate things. You can either use W, A, S, D, Q, and E. And yeah, I guess in this case it's A and D controls rotation in that flame frame, or in that axis. So I've attached those, and you can adjust them whether they're used for yaw and pitch and roll. But for most people, don't worry right now, it'll just work for you. Uh, what else we need is we need an air intake. So the air intake provides air for the jet engine. And I'm just going to stick one. So cancel symmetry mode. You see how it's looking weird? That's because I'm putting two in the same place. But I press one or press press a X to cancel symmetry mode. And now we've got a now we've got an air intake that can, grabs over the top. Finally, for lift off and landing, we're going to need to have uh, some wheels. So we have this fixed landing gear, which we can just put near the back. So press X again to make sure you've got two of those. X turns the symmetry on and off. Important thing about the rear landing gear is it has to be behind the center of mass, but in front of the rear control surfaces, because the rear control surfaces are going to help you lift off. At the front, we're going to have a single wheel. So again, cancel symmetry mode, stick that at the front. It has to be in front of the center of mass because the center of mass will be spread across all of these. And if you have the center of mass off to the side, your whole aircraft will fall over. Now, finally, I think for newbies, it's going to be a good idea to have a pair of parachutes right where the center of mass is. So that's that big yellow blob. We're going to put a, pa a pair of parachutes here because if you have trouble landing, you can always deploy the chutes, and this will probably make your uh, excursion on the aircraft a little more survivable. So actually, let's fix up the staging, and we are ready to go. 
Okay, so before we go anywhere, let's enable the brakes. The brakes are the B key, and you see this light con comes on up the top. If you want to enable them permanently, you can just click on that, and that will engage the parking brake. We want to look around in the map mode, pressing M. You can click on your location area, D81JZ, 1JZ, depending upon which side of the Atlantic you come from. We have a couple of contracts, just check. A land distance record, I think we're going to achieve a land distance record here, but we're not going to achieve a speed record. Okay, so throttle to 100%. Press T to enable your stability control system. You, c you can't get stability control if you have either an engineer or science. You can only get stability control with a pilot. And for these long journeys on an aircraft, initially I would recommend a pilot. So there, we're ready to go. Turn off the brakes, press space, and we're gonna zip down the runway and hopefully pick up some air here. As I said, it's well worth watching my old series, A Beginner's Guide to Aerodynamics, because it will explain what happens with aerodynamics and the best way to get these things to fly. With aircraft, it's a good idea to roll because you're going to have much more control in the pitch direction. And the other thing is, with this engine, you probably want to throttle back. Once you reach about 300 meters per second, there's not much point flying faster than that. So just throttle yourself down to about uh, you know 60% throttle you'll get much more efficient flight. What happens is around 300 to 370 meters per second, you get really high drag because that is the transonic region. And you're kind of going from being a subsonic aircraft to being a transonic aircraft. And it just requires a whole lot more thrust to actually get through that. You'll find that with aircraft that they'll fly really nicely until you try to cross the sound barrier and then they just won't go any faster. But once they're through, they will pick up and go even faster still. So anyway, yeah, this is going to be a long flight. You can actually use time acceleration, if you like, uh, to get you there a little bit faster. But I think this is a good place for me to temporarily stop this, and we'll come back with episode 5. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.